Folks, welcome back to the Bobby Bo Show. Here's the moves it starts with. It's a Dutch defense, and I don't know how to play against this because no one ever does it. So I'm just going to follow basic opening principles like my recent video. Check it out if you want to learn how to play every single opening without learning any opening at all. And now I play bishop to f4. They play knight to f6, e3, and now I have a solid pawn chain with control of the center. My bishop is outside the pawn chain, and after e6, I'll play c4 because I want to play knight to c3, but I don't want to block the pawn, so I'll bring the pawn out first. And also, I want to give you guys a quick update, since I just announced I'm going to become a chess master soon. I haven't really started studying chess a whole lot, but I have been taking good care of myself and doing a lot of puzzles every morning. And I just got my puzzle rating back up to above 2800 for a little bit, so I'm feeling pretty good. And I think I can start committing more time to chess soon. And also, I just released a new old Fortnite video. One of my best Fortnite challenges from back in the day. Check that out if you like my old Fortnite videos. Some of you might remember it, but if not, then you're in for a treat here. Especially at the end, you don't want to miss the ending. And every Friday, I will upload a Fortnite video as long as you guys keep liking them. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss those. And one more thing, make sure you check out the Discord. Link in the description. If you want to participate in future chess or Fortnite related activities, nothing announced yet. But if you get in there right now early before everyone else gets in there, we can chat, answer some questions, hang out and get to know each other a little bit. So check out the Discord link in the description and I'll be in there after the video to hang out and talk to you guys for a little bit. But after Bishop to E7, now I can finally play Knight to C3. And after they castle, Bishop to D3, developing my Bishop. Gonna develop my King side now and castle King side, but they want a Finchardo. So they play b6 and they're getting ready to bring a bishop to b7. Lining it up with the g2 square on this juicy open diagonal here. We'll see how that plays out after knight to e2 and I'm ready to castle. And I usually play knight to f3, but by knight to e2 now I can maybe come to g3 or f4. And I guess I felt like that was better this game. Maybe because I'm supporting a push in the middle or something. Maybe I'm going to build up something. I don't know. But now after bishop to b7, they're attacking my g2 pawn. But I'll just castle. And the pawn's defended, but the bishop is on this open diagonal. Probably the most powerful piece on the board right now, just because it's controlling the most space. But they don't have anything else supporting it yet, so they'll try to bring their queen over with queen to e8. And now the queen can come over. But you're not defending this pawn anymore. I'll just take that pawn. But now after queen to g6, they're threatening checkmate. If it was their turn, I'd get checkmated, so I have to do something here. And I'm looking at d5. Best move right now is just d5. But I'm wondering if that loses a pawn or something, because I don't think I can support that yet. But I actually can, but we'll see it after knight to f4, attacking the queen now, and supporting d5. And after they move their queen to g5, keeping up the pressure on the checkmate here. But now d5 blocks the diagonal, and they can't take here. So knight to a6, developing their knight, connecting their rooks, and attacking my bishop that's undefended. So it seems okay, right? But now my best moves are either knight to h3, attacking the queen here, and then bring the bishop back to e5, or just bring the bishop back to e5 right now. But instead, I play knight to b5, the third best move. Still a little bit winning, but they should just take my bishop. I take back, they play rook to c8, and then I bring my knight back, and they play a6, and I bring my knight to d4, and I just have a good knight in the middle, and I'm up a pawn, but not quite winning yet. But instead, they take my pawn. You can't do that. You can't take the pawn on d5. They thought maybe because my knight moved off of the defense here, and I didn't see it earlier either, so fair enough. I'll just take back now, and after they take with the knight, do you see it now? Right now we only have the knight attacking, but we can add another attacker with bishop to c4. The knight is pinned to the king, and now the bishop and the queen also attack the knight. Knight can't move here. We're about to win a piece. It's a pin and a discovered attack. You have to know your tactics here. And after knight captures c7, I take back with my knight, and I'm about to win a piece here, but it's their turn. They play rook a to c8 now, but it's too late. The easiest way is just to take with the bishop here, but I decide to make it a little bit tough. I take with the knight, and after king to h8... I have to be a little bit careful here, because if I just took this bishop, it would be checkmate. And I want to move this knight back, maybe. But then this bishop would be hanging, and I can't move this knight because it's checkmate. So I have to be really careful here. But I play the best move, f4, attacking the queen here. And they just want to keep up this pressure, so they just go back to g6, staying in front of the king here. But now that I move the f pawn forward, I can bring my queen up to e2. And now the queen defends the pawn here. And now I can start to move these pieces... And also the queen defends this bishop, so I can move the knight back, and they can't take it with the rook. But now bishop to d6, moving the bishop to safety, but also attacking my knight twice now. So I go back to b5, attacking the bishop again. And I would like to just trade off pieces and simplify now, but they don't want that. Bishop to c5, hitting my pawn here, 
which is the only thing blocking my king. So they're putting a lot of pressure on my king right now, even though they're down a piece. I am feeling the pressure here. So I'll try to get rid of some of that pressure with b4. Attacking the bishop here, defended by the knight. And what do they have to do now? Well, if they just move the bishop back, I'm going to take it with my knight. But if they take, they're actually winning a pawn. Because either I take back with the knight, they have rook capture c4. And I can't take this rook because it would be checkmate. So much pressure here. That's okay. I gave them a pawn when I'm up a piece. So by giving them a little bit back, I took off some of their pressure and made the game a little bit more simple. But now I have to worry about this knight here. So knight to d3. And now I can come up to e5, fork maybe. So they play d6 and now my knight can't come forward. And I can't take this pawn yet because the queen defends it. So what do I do? Rook to c1. Trying to get the rook traded off and simplify even more. Because without rooks, it's harder for them to checkmate me. If they don't want to trade, they go rook to e4. Attacking the pawn here, defended by my queen. So I play rook to c7, attacking their bishop. That's been annoying me this entire game. But they have danger levels. Rook captures e3. Attacking my queen now, and I can't take back, of course, because of the checkmate threat that's been going on this whole game. So my queen's under attack. Rook also attacks this knight, but my rook is attacking their bishop. I just have to move my queen to safety while still defending the square here. So pretty much any safe square is good here. And I go queen to f2. Still attacking the rook here. If they take, I take their bishop. And no more checkmate threats. Maybe my queen comes up to g3 sometime. And we trade queens. But they have to defend this bishop. So they go bishop to e4. Putting it in the middle of the board. Attacking my knight here twice. Defended by the pawn. But I could just play knight to e1 now. Moving my knight backwards. But now the knight defends the g2 pawn instead of my queen. And my queen can do stuff like take the rook. So just best to do knight to e1 right now. But I see knight to b4. Just trying to move my knight forward instead of backwards, I guess. Hard to see backwards moves. And now I want to double my rooks up and just attack the king here. But they play rook to f3, attacking my queen, and I can't take because the pawn is pinned to the king. So I have to move my queen out of the way. So queen to d2. Now my queen is attacking the pawn with the knight, and we're making some progress. But my queen is doing a lot of work here. I need to take off the pressure on this checkmate. But they play rook to e8, and they're trying to bring even more pressure on probably. But I can finally take this pawn. Knight captures d6, hitting the rook and the bishop, and they thought they could just pin the knight to the queen with rook to d8. But hopefully you see the checkmate in 6 right now. Pretty obvious. So go ahead and take a moment while you smash the like button. And hopefully you found the move. Knight to f7. Checking the king and the rook. And if the queen takes, you take with the rook. Trading queens. Their rook is still under attack. There's no more checkmate threats. And you're about to checkmate them. But they move the king out of the check. King to g8. And now just queen captures d8. Checkmate on the back rank. No way to block it. Good game. Thanks for watching the Bobby Bosco. Smash the like button if you enjoyed today's episode. I hope you have an excellent rest of your day. Goodbye. In this episode, you'll learn every chess opening without having to memorize any moves. Most beginners think that they're losing because they don't know the right openings, but actually, they don't understand what makes a good opening in general. And when I started playing three years ago, I played a lot of tricks and traps.